Revolutionary Greetings. This is Haki Shakur coming back at you once again in another sacred space. I'm in Suffolk, VA, Suffolk, Virginia. I'm at one of the most historical, resistance, self-determined lands in our story. I'm in the Great Dismal Swamp, the home of the Great Dismal Swamp Maroons and the native indigenous nations of peoples. Take a look at that sign. This is also a historical site for one of the most revolutionary clandestine networks to ever be organized by our ancestors, the Underground Railroad to up north and to down south, to Mexico and South America, but more specifically to up north with Harriet Tubman and all the great new African freedom fighters and ancestors, man. Take a walk with me. Walking in the footsteps of our ancestors in the Great Dismal Swamp, the home of the Maroons of North America. A segment of ancestors that have been suppressed throughout history, whose story has never ever really been told. Man, this this is years in the making right here, man. Like I've been trying to get out here. Um, ever since I started studying the Great Dismal Swamps and the Maroons and the Maroons of Jamaica. So this is just another extension of the Jamaican Maroons. But this is the Maroons of the South, of, of the Southeast, what we call today New Africa in the southern part of the United States of America. A little history, the Great Dismal Swamp Maroons. This area was heavily populated by the indigenous natives peoples, the brown, the black, and what they called the red native indigenous peoples of this land. So many nations was on this land first, but around the period of 1680, 1670, 1680, this became a safe haven for our African ancestors who were brought over here in the transatlantic slave trade and who was brought to the Virginia plantations and started to work on the Virginia plantations um, through slave labor. So in order to escape that horrific system of slavery, these great ancestors migrated to this area, escaped to this area, ran to this area to find a safe haven and a safe place away from the horrific dehumanizing system of slavery. I mean, they came from all over, from up north, um, West Virginia, Eastern Virginia, and Southern Virginia. Cause this is also the main gateway to the Underground Railroad, railroad of Harriet Tubman in that, in that clandestine network. Um, this was a stop. Some, some, of this, some of this was a stop at first. This, this was a stopping ground and a stopping place. Let's take a look at this. As you can see, the swampy lands. The swampy lands, this is where it get its name from, the, the Great Dismal Swamp. The swampy lands. These, this is what the conditions looked like back in that time period when your ancestors escaped to this area. Now, and to the most important, the Great Dismal Swamp lasted from 1680 to somewhere around up until the 1860s to 1865 after the Civil War. But this place was a heavy, heavy um, area of, 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 you know, participation when it came to the Revolutionary War first. During the Revolutionary War, this is also the area where a lot of Africans escaped to who didn't want to participate in the Revolutionary War between the British Crown and the guys who wanted to become what you know today as the nation state, the settler state of the United States of America. So this is the area where a lot of our ancestors refused to participate in that because it didn't benefit them or their freedoms. So they escaped to this landmass to get away from that war. And also this is the area where um, the British side of the Revolutionary War, uh, they recruited a lot of dismal swamp maroons to participate in that. Some of them did, some of them didn't. So that's just a little history also. Industrialization. I got to get this in before I cut this video off. This, when these ancestors set up these individualistic settlements, um, uh, economic formations, um, sovereign communities, and, and, and just, a, just a sovereign nation state of villages of, of mass 
individuals or ancestors from different tribes of Africa who formed what we know today as the Maroon. This is where the Maroons came up out of. So economically, this is also an economic spot that we can go back and learn from because when they came to this land, as you can see, it was marshy and swampy and things of that nature. They were still able to develop an industrialization system to keep them, you know, from being hungry, uh, money, uh, housing, and things of that nature. So they, they, they went into the businesses what you today you see today as um, the lumber business. They was chopping, they was chopping down the trees and things of that nature and creating shindles. If you know what shindles are, this is where the shindle business come from and things of that nature is like. Uh, they did this to self-sustain uh, uh, a mini economy, a, a self-determined economy in these swamps. So you, this is also a place of influence when it comes to economics for new African people and a new African nation and new African Ujamaa and all those type of things is that we can build our economy out of nothing. We can build our economy out of nothing, off of the land, because we are land people. It's in our bloodline. We are land people. Last but not least, it wouldn't be right if I didn't mention some of these, this, this great freedom fighter. This is also the area where the great freedom fighter and his military units, other Maroons, came out from to, to initiate military campaigns to protect their sovereignty, to protect the Great Dismo Swamp. Bob Farabee. If you don't know who Bob Farabee is, Bob Farabee came out in the revolutionary time of period of resistance for Maroons around 1823, 1823 to 1825. He sparked military, campaign, military campaigns out of this swamp. And he also sparked slave rebellions on the plantations because the Maroons would leave out the swamps and do clandestine military campaigns to raid plantations. They raided white plantations for resources, guns, weapons, everything they needed to bring back to the Dismal Swamp. Remember that ancestor name. Put him in your libations, Bob Farabee. Also, another great freedom fighter that's connected to the Great Dismal Swamp, the great Nat Turner. Nat Turner, because not too far from this area is Cortland, Virginia, where Nat Turner sparked off the Nat Turner Rebellion, uh, killing over 55 white people, slave plantations, their wives, everything in their existence, wiping it out. It is, it, it, it's a myth that, you know, and legend, it's a myth and legend that Nat Turner was trying to get to the Dismo Swamp to create his own settlement, his own free community, once he had to escape after he sparked the slave rebellion in 1831, Black August. Also rumored is that a lot of Dismo Swamp Maroons came out the swamp to participate in the Nat Turner Rebellion. So they're saying that some of those individuals that participated in Nat Turner's rebellion were Maroons who came out, helped them, and escaped back to the Dismal Swamp. Because all of this is the 757, the seven cities. It's all interconnected. And also, don't forget that the Great Dismal Swamp stretches all the way into North Carolina. So this had an effect on the new Africans and Africans in North Carolina. Man, this, this, this is so much potent, powerful history of resistance, man, that they don't teach our babies and they don't teach in school. So, man, please do yourself a due diligence and learn about the Great Dismal Swamp Maroons. Teach your kids about the Great Dismal Swamp Maroons because this is a part of a history that's not going to be taught by this uh, racist public education system. Last but not least, Virginia, for people that don't know, Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, had a mass population of Maroons. So there were Maroon settlements all across the Southern Upper South to the Deeper South to Georgia, even stretching to Alabama. So this is why we call the South New Africa. If y'all don't get it, you see what I'm saying? This is where the New African independence rose from. You know what I'm saying? Out of the Maroons resistance movement and history of fighting back against our oppressors and the slave uh, system and the capitalist system of slavery. Um, Appalachian Mountains, I gotta throw this in here. Appalachian Mountain Maroons, they have a deep connection to this history with the story of, of, of John Brown and, and the John Brown raids on Hopper's Ferry. They were trying to establish a Maroon settlement in the Appalachian um, Mountains of Virginia once Jim Brown, if he, was, if he was able to defeat the United States Army, which we know he didn't 
um, accomplished. But we, we, we you know, we hold him in uh, high regards because he was a part of this history of maroonism in Virginia, man. So I'm gonna close out on that note, man. Industrialization, identity, land, self-determination, self-defense. Those are the principles. That's your birthright. That's your bloodline. I'm gonna sign off on that note. Hockey Quilly Shakur, free the land by any means necessary.